Let's talk about the optional component in this spreadsheet, and that is using the pricing formula tab. So the spreadsheet includes this yellow pricing formula, which can help you with setting a profitable price point for your finished good. There's a few things going on here, and I know sometimes we like to have flexibility with our pricing. We don't want to rely on a set formula, so I designed it to where you can play with that a lot to get a price that suits your needs, or if you want to, you can just totally ignore it. So the first thing that you want to do if you decide to use this pricing formula is enter your product on the spreadsheet, and I'm going to keep going with the example of our dress. I'm going to type in the description here. And then I can either type in the cost or if I want to link to it real quick, just to save myself a minute, I might do that. So I'm trying to price this sunflower dress that I know cost me $19 in materials. Here is the formula that the spreadsheet starts out with. It's basically your cost of goods made multiplied by your retail markup, which is a default of four in the spreadsheet, but you can adjust this number to be whatever you want, plus your labor rate, that's like your time and energy going into that product, creating it, plus your overhead rate equals your retail price. And if you ever get confused about how it's being calculated, I've got your little like formula cheat reference right here that tells you what's going on. And then the wholesale price is just me taking your retail price and dividing it by two. Finally, you've got your profit margin right here, which is going to be your sales price, your retail sales price, minus the cost of goods that went into it. That tells you your actual profit margin. So the next component of the formula that we need to enter is the time it took for us to create this dress. And you can go into your pricing formula tab and adjust what you want your hourly rate to be. This might be any number, depending on how, how much you want your hourly rate to be. Let's say it took me um, 45 minutes to make this dress, to sew this dress. We want to enter this in one hour units. So 45 minutes out of 60 minutes in an hour is actually a fourth of an hour, which is 0.75. So this is what 45 minutes would look like entered in hour increments, one hour units. So that means I wanna pay myself $11.25 as my wage, my labor rate for creating this dress. And then the next thing is overhead rate. An overhead rate is actually going to be dealt with on this overhead detail tab here. Let's talk about overhead rate real quick. And I've got tons of links on my website where I kind of dive into my thoughts on handmade pricing, my philosophy on why so many makers end up underpricing. I've got some good links in Appendix C and Appendix D in the PDF instructions for this spreadsheet. So I don't wanna waste your time digging really into the rabbit hole of pricing right now. But basically, a lot of us as makers and product sellers, we spend a lot of time accounting for the costs that go into the finished goods that we're creating, but there's so many other costs that go into running our business. You might have credit card fees, advertising fees, printing costs for your business cards, craft show, booth rental fees, um, your Etsy transaction fees, so many other things that are not just the raw materials and supplies that go into this good. How do we make sure that we are recouping or recovering all those non-supply expenses every time we make a sale without eating into our profits? We use what I like to call the overhead rate. So on this overhead detail tab and don't get overwhelmed because overhead, it's not a tax concept. It's really more of an art than a science. There's not a right or wrong way to do it. We're basically just taking all your non-supply expenses and we're dividing them up into a little number and we're gonna include that number in every pricing equation we do. So every time you make a sale, it's like the customer is paying you back a tiny portion of all your business expenses. So to calculate your, your overhead rate, I've got two different columns on the overhead rate tab. 
You don't have to enter stuff under both if you don't want to. It's just here to help you wrap your head around it. You can use both columns or just one of them if you want. You basically want to be entering estimates, annual budgeted estimates of your non-supply expenses for the year. So for the estimated cost of indirect materials, this is going to be things that help you create your finished goods or even go into the finished goods, but they're not part of inventories and supplies that you're entering elsewhere. So that might be like thread or that could be your shipping materials if you're not inventorying them. It could be your scissors and your pliers and your ring mandrel and your hammer or your drill or whatever sort of equipment you're using, you could come up with an annual estimate of those costs. And then over here, we've got our annual estimated business expenses. This can be things like your PayPal expenses, your Etsy fees, advertising costs, website costs, all that good stuff. So again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. I don't want you to feel like you've got to enter every single business expense in these columns. It's really just for you to enter some overall estimates to try and figure out what dollar amount you should include in your prices to help you recover these costs every time you make a sale. All right, so I've entered a few examples here of what I might dump in these columns. And again, don't let this overwhelm you. You don't have to put every business expense you think you might have in here as part of your overhead rate. You might choose to just have, you know, like you might choose just to have things that are related to your products and selling and maybe leave more of the fixed costs out of your overhead rate. Or you might even choose to put fixed costs in here but leave out other types of costs. You could even have different overhead rates for different categories of your products. There is no right or wrong way to do it. Just keep the overall goal in mind, which is you want to be recovering the non-supply costs of your business when you make a sale and you don't want it to necessarily be cutting into your profit. If we don't think about those costs when we do our pricing, then chances are we might think we're making a profit, but when you go look at your bank account balance, you don't have a lot of money in there because what you thought was your profit cushion is actually going towards paying all your other business expenses. That's what we're trying to avoid. So I came up with uh, the denominator. Basically, we're adding up all these estimated costs for the year, and then we've got to divide it by something. This is like a couple thousand dollars, right? And we've got to divide it by something, and you can play around with this number too. I divide it by the estimated number of products I'm planning to create this year. You could divide it by the estimated number of sales or number of products you think you will sell this year. There's different ways you can do it, but I divide it by, I think I'm gonna sell 400 products this year. And so my suggested overhead rate is $4.44, which is going to travel to this blue cell right here. And I don't have it linking because you might wanna use different overhead rates for different products, but it's here for your reference. So if you decide you do wanna use it, you can just simply type it into that overhead rate column and now it's gonna be part of your pricing formula. So like I said, we dump that price in and then it's going to spit out a retail price for you based on what you're putting in there. And if this number looks really gross to you, which I imagine a $92 sunflower toddler dress might, you can play around with the different components that go into it, which for us, I would maybe recommend reducing the markup rate. Let's try 2.5. You want to always be keeping an eye on the wholesale price, making sure that the wholesale price is covering your costs, etc. because you don't want to dip so low that if you decided to sell wholesale or you decided to offer a discount, you're not covering your costs anymore. And like I said, I could dive down the rabbit hole of pricing all day long, but if you do use this tab and you like the pricing formula aspect, then once you get your retail price, you can use that over here on the retail price column. You can type it in if you want, or you can link to it like we've been doing just for making, just for ease of use. And again, if you want more thoughts and 
learning surrounding handmade pricing. I've got some good resources and links uh, in the PDF instructions, or you can also visit paperandspark.com pricing.